When we started this project, it was just my wife and I, and we were actually doing a two bedroom, one bathroom apartment for ourselves in the development, the same unit that I'm in right now, but it didn't have the top story. About halfway through the permitting process on this development, we found out we were having twins, and our needs kind of changed instantly. It was something that my wife and I had been talking about for quite some time, um, like almost like a hybridization of, of living and working together, uh, maybe even like a European model, so to speak, where you'd, you'd kind of, my wife's a pastry chef by trade and I'm obviously an architect, and so the idea was we might stack our respective careers vertically. One of the challenges inherent in a six meter wide site that has two story boundary walls on either side to the north and the south is getting light down. We changed the approach to the project. Instead of the universal kind of apartment where one is kind of stacked on top of another like pancakes, this project is very sectional and you'll see you know, that you've got skylights bringing light down, we have light wells, and it's all these kind of strategies and having this sectional approach that changed the quality of the space. And so that kind of approach was really effective. So essentially, I think we were able to design a lifestyle here where every inch of our house is used. There's no kind of wasted space. You know, every kind of corner, every floor is used. We don't have rooms where we just shut the door and, and you know, never go in. And, you know, that kind of daily movement of the sun drives the way that we use the spaces. We have this east-facing deck that we wake up to and the, the morning light kind of fills the living room and that's where we have coffee and you know might read the newspaper. And then we have this western-facing roof deck and roof terrace that responds to that evening. You watch the sunset every night and so it's this beautiful and, and kind of enjoyable pattern of living that, that relies on, on the movement of light. We chose materials that were intentionally lighter in aesthetic so you know the very like light oaks and obviously kind of white walls um, the joinery is predominantly white with this kind of contrast to this black form ply which the kind of edging of the form ply picks up the the kind of oaky colors of the flooring and it's raw you know it's it's a house for a family it's not this kind of museum it's certainly well worn in and well lived in um, I think it'd be very tough to live with, with infant and toddler twins and try to kind of preserve this, this museum type aesthetic. And so the materials are, are natural, they're exposed and robust. The building process was incredibly challenging. Um, I ended up having to, to build it and that was a harrowing experience. I'd never really built anything and then my, my first build was a four-story mixed-use building with two-story shared walls on boundary. Um, so the reason why I built it was um, not by choice. So the first thing I would recommend is don't have two twins on the same week that you start construction on a four-story mixed-use project. Um, the second tip I have is be very diligent and careful in, in the selection of your builder. Um, you know, I was probably 29 at the time when I chose the builder, and I went with the cheapest builder. You know, a year into the build, essentially, I was faced with an incomplete frame and a project that was not moving. We went out to tender, and the tender prices came back at, at almost double what the original price was, uh, which obviously sent us into a panic. And, you know, we were looking at our finances, and we just did not have the money that it took to get a builder to do it. And, you know, it was, if you can imagine, you know, the chaos of having, you know, two twin infants around and trying to juggle that, trying to manage the architecture firm, and then on top of that chucking, um, you know, a casual four-story mixed-use commercial build into the mix. It was a trying time, um, exhausting, you know, it was long days, it was emotionally draining, it was... Um, an immense challenge and you know it, it, it nearly broke me um, I, I don't think it did but you know it, it kind of it was the stress was unlike anything I'd ever experienced and so you know that was another kind of component of this that I think ended up in hindsight being a positive experience, but during the time it felt
terribly negative um, and terribly hard. But you know, it was this kind of appreciation of how things had to come together and thinking about the sequencing of things and, and a real appreciation of the people who, who bring these things together and, and just how hard it is. You know, living in a, a nice light and airy space, I mean, especially, you know, in, in Corona times is, is that much more um, powerful. You know, it just, it does really impact your, your head space. I never really get sick of being home, um, you know, so the quarantine <laughs> hasn't been, you know, for, for us as probably severe as it, as it has for many. Um, and I think a part of that psychology is having, you know, a nice space to live in. Um, I, I probably, I knew the importance of it before, but getting to actually live in a design space has only kind of underscored that more.